Good morning. Uh, I'm uh, very pleased to be here. Uh, I appreciate the invitation that I uh, received uh, to, from uh, Al Jalila Hospital to be here and uh, from uh, Dubai Healthcare City Authority and for Hesham Hamoda, in other words, and uh, uh, John Fayad. Uh, it's wonderful to see everyone uh, working together on this particularly important issue of uh, autism in children. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Ah, see that? Magic. Okay. Um, that uh, why am I uh, giving this talk about systems of care? Uh, that uh, I had an experience. Uh, I realized after I had written my comments that uh, I participated, I worked in a system of care. Uh, I was a department chairman at uh, Cambridge Hospital, uh, the psychiatry department, which is now actually called Cambridge Health Alliance. And uh, I didn't do anything to establish the system of care. It, would, it existed before my time. And it was, in fact, a system of neighborhood health clinics uh, with a hospital uh, and with a variety of collaborative agreements uh, that provided a continuum of care uh, for both children and adults, uh, not only with mental disorders, but with uh, complex uh, uh, problems that involved health, uh, as well as uh, mental health. I think this is a, a model that I realized uh, represented a system of care. And if you look in the literature uh, on systems of care, uh, you'll see that there are uh, relatively few uh, functioning systems of care uh, that have been sustained over time. The Cambridge Health Alliance has been in existence uh, since the 1970s. That's a long time to be able to sustain that, and I'm going to say something about that uh, at this time. Uh, the other experience that I had uh, was I worked at the World Health Organization uh, in Geneva, and as a result of that, I was able to travel to many places around the world uh, to see systems of care uh, for individuals uh, uh, suffering with uh, mental disorders. Uh, it was striking to me that uh, we have a Western concept sometimes of systems of care, uh, but in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, you can see the equivalent of a system of care uh, with the central focus being uh, an affected individual's uh, family, home, uh, with other services uh, being surrounding, surrounding that. So I'm going to go on to uh, talk about it. Uh, just one more comment, uh, that today if you look for systems of care, you may also see uh, healthcare delivery uh, science. In other words, uh, people are uh, talking a lot about implementation science. So a lot of what we're going to talk about in terms of systems of care falls under that kind of title now. Uh, anybody wanting references, welcome to see me later. I have no conflicts of interest, although I wish I did. And uh, this is a little bit the outline uh, of my talk. Uh, I have a question. Uh, is it possible to, to show the, the slides on the screen here, as well as my turning to look up? Uh, that would be helpful. Um, pardon me? Oh, I see. Oh, there's another screen. OK, fine. I'm all set. Oh. No, that's fine. That's fine. I'm okay. I'm okay. That's great. No. So this is a little bit the outline of what I'm going to say. I talk about the definition, uh, the focus in terms of systems of care, how systems of care are developed, what are the advantages of system of care, what are the challenges, and the issue of sustainability. And I'm going to actually spend more time uh, thinking, talking about the latter topics. So as a definition, uh, a system of care is a comprehensive set of services with easy access, allowing for movement from one service to another with a minimum of obstacles. Uh, well, that has a lot of implications uh, in terms of how you minimize the obstacles uh, in moving from one uh, service area to another. And I'll be more specific about that in a minute. But as an example, uh, confidentiality of records, in other words, uh, is a problem. Uh, how people communicate with one another uh, is a problem. How people physically get from one place to another uh, is a problem. So there are many uh, concrete uh, issues involved. It's also services that offer care with a similar philosophy 
uh, and focused on positive outcomes for the patient and or the family. So the emphasis is on the patient and or the family, uh, not for the provider, okay? It's not to maximize number of visits or to maximize financial gain. Uh, it's to provide services for the client and for the patient. And in, when it comes to autism, uh, it's not limited to medical care, uh, but it has to embrace uh, needed social, uh, educational, economic services, and access to advocacy where needed. So in terms of educational services, uh, the uh, sectors, the education sector and the health sector, uh, often are quite divided, uh, and in some cases in competition with one another uh, for finances, for resources, uh, et cetera. So autism uh, mandates or requires uh, that there be more collaboration if we're going to get effective uh, care uh, for patients who need it. Uh, the other is in terms of advocacy. Uh, in the U.S. and in Brazil, uh, in Germany, uh, in many places, uh, individuals affected by disorders such as autism uh, have to have a recourse, have to have the ability to appeal uh, the lack of services that they get. Uh, and that kind of advocacy uh, is also part of a system of care. So what is the focus? Should the system of care be focused on a single disorder or encompass a range of conditions? I think this is important uh, to ponder. This is a conference uh, dedicated to autism, uh, but is it really important to develop a system of care focused on autism, or uh, should we focus uh, on general health care for children uh, with autism being a part of that? That is, having the capacity within that kind of a system uh, to deal with autistic or developmentally uh, disabled uh, children. We can see in some cases when you have single disorder uh, systems that it distorts the healthcare system and draws off resources. Uh, we've seen that with the HIV epidemic, in other words, uh, uh, where the, the services for HIV outstripped often the healthcare services for the rest of the population uh, to the extent that in some cases people were willing to self identify as being HIV positive in order to get the healthcare services uh, that the rest of the population could not uh, access. We saw that also in the case of Ebola in Africa. On the other hand, it's uh, advocacy for single disorder systems is far more easy and effective. And I'll, uh, I'll mention how that comes to be uh, when we talk about uh, advocating for uh, the systems and the resources necessary. Uh, the other area is uh, we're talking now a lot of emphasis on primary care, primary health care. Uh, can a primary health care system really be established and sustained uh, for a disorder uh, such as autism? Uh, will primary health care providers uh, embrace uh, a disorder such as autism uh, and be willing to accept the training uh, necessary uh, to be able to be literate, at least in terms of dealing with other individuals who provide care uh, along with the physician. Uh, it's very uh, complicated uh, to get pediatricians uh, to become more literate in other words about uh, autism uh, and to be able to engage it because it's a very time-consuming uh, uh, time consuming disorder. The other is that we have to, in a primary care system, make allowances uh, for comorbidities that go along with autism. Uh, so can we expect the primary care physician uh, to deal with the psychiatric comorbidities, with epilepsy, with a variety of other disorders uh, that we see in children uh, with autism? And then lastly, in terms of focus, we need to avoid medicalization, uh, especially for autistic uh, uh, children. Uh, the reason being that it's a multi we want to engage many disciplines. We want to engage education, uh, social work, social services, uh, a variety uh, of other disciplines. And, and if the approach is overly medicalized, uh, they run the risk of losing uh, those individuals. Is culture a barrier to the development of a system of care? Well, it's possible that it could be. In other words, uh, if in fact the culture uh, is one that supports uh, only the, the uh, importance of medical intervention, or if it's a culture uh, that has other belief systems uh, that would prohibit a person from engaging in a system of care uh, that was comprehensive and multidisciplinary, uh, then we run a risk 
uh, of not being able to provide the services that we want to. So how do we develop a system of care? I, I think one of the most effective ways to develop a system of care uh, is from consumers and parents affected and sometimes affected individuals um, that uh, they have a, 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 an interest, they have an investment uh, in this. Uh, and there's a question then, uh, do we develop these services uh, in a top-down manner uh, or uh, do we develop them uh, from the grassroots, from the parents, from the people who are affected by the disorder? There's always a danger in a top-down model, in other words, of leaving out uh, the concerns that the parents have. Uh, and uh, so that we have to find a balance between engaging parents and engaging eff affected individuals, especially now with the movement of adult uh, affected uh, autistic individuals, uh, we have to find a way to engage both. In other words, uh, it's not sufficient uh, to only have one group involved in developing programs, and I'll say more about that in a minute. Uh, it's also effective if you have a person with, uh, who's uh, financially well off or has access to resources uh, who's affected by uh, autism. They often can be very uh, influential in developing programs and we shouldn't dismiss that. Uh, uh, that's very important. Uh, sometimes a system gets developed out of a crisis. In other words, uh, we saw that, uh, for instance, with Ebola, uh, that Ebola uh, required a, a, a huge effort Okay. As the legacy, though, uh, is an improved healthcare system uh, in many cases uh, that provides primary health care now uh, that didn't exist uh, before the crisis. And there are many other examples uh, similar to that. There's also the issue of uh, having a program, a uh, system of care, uh, that comes as a result of a grant initiative. There's always a problem with that, though. In other words, the problem is what happens in terms of sustainability. When the grant goes, uh, does the system go? And I'm going to give a, an example of that uh, from the US. Uh, uh, but it's a problem. You have to have a life beyond the grant. And then lastly, in other words, if we develop a system of care, we can have a model in our minds and think about a system of care. Uh, but then who, who occupies the house? In other words, uh, uh, do we have enough trained personnel uh, to actually carry this out? In other words, it's like building a medical school and not having any doctors. In other words, how, uh, how you have to deliver the services uh, that are required. So there are great advantages to having a system of care as opposed to isolated providers of care uh, with everyone in their own silo uh, with difficulty in communication. Uh, it brings together resources. There also can be additive effects. Uh, it reduces barriers to access uh, for both the parents and also for the providers. A provider who functions in a well, in, in a well-functioning, uh, who operates in a well-functioning system of care uh, has an easier time of it. In other words, they, are, they can be more effective in what they do with the patient. Uh, a system of care allows marginalized individuals to be embraced by uh, a care system where they'll feel more welcome. Uh, each time that they go to a different provider or a different facility, uh, they're not greeted uh, as individuals coming from someplace else, uh, but as an extension uh, of a larger network of caring uh, individuals. And caregivers themselves are not frustrated by difficult referral processes. Uh, uh, with a shared philosophy, uh, it's often easier uh, to call up somebody, to uh, talk about a case, uh, to get uh, access to care uh, without uh, feeling that you're in an adversarial uh, position. And then some assume that a system of care is going to be cost effective. Uh, this is really the great vulnerability. Uh, developing a system of care is no guarantee that it's going to be cost effective. In fact, in most of the largest demonstrations of systems of care, it's required an input of additional resources, uh, not a savings of resources uh, when you think about a uh, system of care. One concept that's, uh, that's current is a, called a medical home. Uh, I don't know if that's being considered here at all. Uh, but uh, one version of that uh, has the pediatrician uh, being like the orchestra leader. In other words, uh, 
uh, having a, a number of people uh, underneath him, in other words, or her. Uh, court, it's uh, coordinated, accessible, uh, it's uh, culturally competent, uh, and has the potential, in other words, uh, uh, to eliminate the need uh, for outside referrals. The problem often is, uh, who's gonna run the medical home? In other words, can you find the individuals, the, the uh, pediatricians and others uh, who want to be this orchestra leader and, and take on that kind of responsibility uh, in the medical home uh, model? If we have a system of care, uh, we can't forget what was talked about yesterday. In other words, that uh, it, the best system of care uh, is uh, vulnerable uh, if there isn't a part of the system uh, that has uh, accurate uh, screening and diagnosis. Uh, this is very important. Uh, sometimes it's overlooked for the sake of uh, having an uh, integrated uh, service. Uh, uh, we forget, we leave out, in other words, the critical importance uh, of really good uh, diagnostic uh, uh, services. Uh, uh, the, the worst thing that one can do is have a system of care uh, with the individual going through or being a part of the system of care uh, with the wrong diagnosis, in other words, or with an inadequate diagnosis of the complexity of the disorder. Screening is not a diagnosis, so to screen to be ent enter into a system of care uh, is not adequate. So what, do we, what kind of services do we provide in a system of care? Uh, I think they have to have an open mind uh, to the kinds and the array of services. Uh, often, if you have just a single intervention and a system of care gets built around a particular inter intervention, uh, we leave people out. In other words, people, individuals may not be uh, responsive to a particular intervention. Uh, individuals in the system uh, may not want to learn that particular intervention, uh, or uh, people may uh, secretly undermine uh, the effects of the intervention that's being offered. Uh, it's very important in a system of care to see the whole patient uh, and to have an open mind. So I'll just mention briefly uh, some examples of systems of care. Uh, in uh, Kenya, uh, uh, there's a very well-developed, quote, system of care uh, that is based uh, uh, in a home. There was an affected individual. Uh, they couldn't uh, access the services that they wanted. Uh, and that individual uh, got other uh, women, as it turned out, uh, in this community uh, to develop a program uh, in the house where she lived and they found two or three other individuals, uh, young people, uh, who required these services. They, in turn, then uh, sought uh, uh, backup, in other words, from an institution that had more expertise. Uh, so as a result of that, in this rural area in Kenya, uh, they actually have a form of a system of care, uh, which is very effective, and ironically, or not ironically, but has been sustained uh, for many years. In the U.S., we had a Robert Wood Johnson wraparound initiative. Uh, this is a very well-funded uh, program uh, that was supposed to demonstrate how uh, we could take care of mentally ill individuals uh, in a system of care uh, that uh, minimized the barriers of referral, et cetera, et cetera. It, it I think, in the outcome of this uh, was quite problematic. Uh, it demonstrated what some of the barriers are uh, to having a system of care with integration. All the things that I mentioned before in terms of accessing records, uh, uh, competition for funding, uh, without the infusion of uh, tremendous support, both financially and otherwise, uh, the Robert Wood Johnson demonstration programs really didn't do much other than to uh, demonstrate uh, that it required a, a huge outside investment to sustain a model of care uh, which may or may not have actually been effective. There's a whole literature about this. And, and lastly, uh, it was mentioned yesterday that the World Health Organization uh, has MHGAP. Uh, one of the aims of MHGAP uh, is actually to help foster the uh, systems of care. And if you go online to the World Health Organization webpage, uh, you'll see a lot of guidance for MHGAP uh, which one might consider here uh, in Dubai uh, for thinking about how to develop 
uh, a system of care for autistic uh, individuals. So uh, one of the issues with uh, autistic individuals, and especially those with comorbidity, uh, is the inappropriate use of hospital care. Uh, emergency room visits for, for around comorbidities, uh, et cetera. Uh, there are times certainly when hospitals are needed, and hospitals, in fact, can be a, a critical link, uh, if not the pivot, for the development of a system of care. Uh, but it shouldn't be the place where people go all the time to get their care. For children with autism, uh, it's as good to be able to mainstream them in the educational system, uh, to be able to keep them in their communities, uh, to keep the activities uh, available to the individuals, uh, and not have them focus, or have the families focus so much on the idea that they become hospital dependent. I think uh, the movie that we saw about Lemonade uh, was a good example, uh, albeit one uh, that required a lot of uh, uh, resources to uh, maintain, uh, but uh, financial resources to maintain. Uh, but uh, uh, it showed that uh, an individual can make great strides uh, outside of the hospital uh, setting. Uh, so what are some of the challenges? Can stakeholders agree on the many aspects of, de of developing a system of care, including the philosophy, uh, sharing of costs, uh, and the profits uh, uh, that uh, may be accrued? Uh, this is a, a very important. Identifying the stakeholders, in other words, and getting them to sit around a table uh, is essential. In other words, without being able to identify all the stakeholders, uh, you run the risk uh, of uh, not being able uh, to sustain care. The other is overcoming intersectoral competition. Uh, who gets the money? Who gets the credit? Uh, autism uh, is particularly vulnerable in this regard because we have to involve education and health and mental health, and maybe for the first time, uh, individuals will have to talk with one another. I was involved in a program in Shanghai uh, where it was a, a grant uh, to develop, uh, to do uh, some research uh, on mental health in the schools. It was the first time uh, that the Minister of Education and the, and the Minister for Health in this particular area had to meet and come together. It was amazing to see over time uh, how they developed the kind of skills or the kind of trust in one another uh, to be able to communicate. Uh, this is a very important uh, issue. The uh, a system of care is always uh, appealing, okay? The idea of talking is we're talking now about a system of care, but it's very difficult to maintain the relationships with turnover of staff, in other words, uh, uh, to be able to keep the same philosophy, to keep the same relationships. Uh, one has to work very carefully at that. Uh, so manualizing a system of care, uh, putting in some structure for a system of care uh, is uh, critically uh, important. Also, this, the system of care has to be willing to be evaluated. In other words, we need standards. In other words, we need quality control. Uh, a system of care uh, is uh, no good, in other words, if it uh, doesn't practice to a, a good standard. In other words, we need to be able to uh, say that we're providing quality care. Uh, and we have to maintain a focus on the disorder. Gradually, people say, well, yeah, we're, we're treating this person and that person, uh, and there's a slippery slope, in other words, uh, uh, in terms of what the care model is and what the target population may be over time. Uh, and then we have to have a, a training, in other words, so that there's a shared understanding uh, of what the individuals are, what the treaters what, are doing uh, in the context of the system of care. A particular problem with the system of care arises uh, with autistic individuals as they move from childhood into adulthood. Uh, whatever system may have existed uh, tends to fall apart. Uh, the transition between uh, childhood and adulthood uh, is a particularly critical issue, uh, and this is one that people struggle with everywhere. What do we do uh, with the older individual? Uh, I'm talking about the 18, 19, 20, 21 year old uh, individual as that person moves uh, forward. Uh, 
and unfortunately, uh, the fallback position often uh, is not the community-based care system uh, or the uh, job uh, system that we saw in Lemonade, uh, but it's institutional care, uh, and this is a, a sad situation for the affected individual. Lastly, we're going to talk about sustainability. Uh, we have to find a financing model. Uh, if we have insurance, in other words, and uh, uh, that can help to sustain it, but often a system of care requires something other than insurance because there's not, reimburse there's not reimbursement for the ancillary services. So government has to step up and say this is an important issue for us uh, and can we provide the additional financial services for that. In some jurisdictions, this is uh, possible. In others, uh, there's a reluctance to be able to do this. Uh, insurance schemes, as I mentioned, are more comfortable with a single provider model, and so they're not willing to uh, provide for the glue in a system of care. Then what you see sometimes is an emerging competition between providers. Okay, uh, that we'll see that there's more than one system of care uh, and they see the potential uh, for gaining uh, access to clinical populations and, and they uh, start to compete with other, another. And lastly, uh, stakeholders, the original stakeholders tend to age out, in other words, and so you lose the vision. Uh, there's a need to keep on renewing the vision uh, and the commitment to be able to provide the, the uh, system of care. So thank you.